Hey guys, welcome to another Maple Story video, and today I'm going to be making a Demon Slayer class guide. So I made one for Zenon back then and Dual Blade back in 2018 summer, and I'm going to be making one for Demon Slayer, Luminous, and Pathfinder. It'll be the same kind of like, I guess, format as I've done the previous ones. I'll try my best to keep it short, so we'll go right to it. I'm going to be talking about the skills, and then also things like hyperstats, what you want to optimize for, V Matrix, what inner ability you want to go for, and even things like Link skills. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First skill to go over- oh, this is gonna be annoying, okay. First skill that we want to go over is, uh, let's talk about the demon basics. First thing you get is Dark Winds. Now, Demon Slayer has a lot of mobility options at the very beginning of their adventure. First one being Glide, which is essentially just by jumping and then pressing jump again. Normally, when you jump on another character, it would be Flash Jump, but for Demon Slayer, you actually glide instead. Relatively decent mobility. It's kind of slow in terms of like carrying yourself over to other areas like the speed of Flash Jump. However, it lasts a long time, so if you need to travel a long distance, it lasts significantly longer than Flash Jump. So let's go ahead and try it now. You can also do some really interesting things like uh, moon gliding, so you can like jump backwards and then you can just glide slowly. It's very momentum and velocity based, so you can tinker around with it however much you want. Second thing with Dark Winds is you can actually Flash Jump by pressing the side arrow key twice. Like that. It's not very effective just because it's uncomfortable having to press the arrow keys twice to jump, but if you ever need just a quick boost, you can. There's also a high jump by pressing the up arrow key twice, you get to hop a relatively long distance. You can also synergize this with gliding, so if you want to jump and then glide, you can go ahead and do that. Alright. Second skill, Demonic Blood, you immediately start out with level 20 willpower and ambition. You also get 100% knockback resistance, so if you like playing a class, that doesn't have to, or if you don't like playing a class that has to rely on things like building a power stance or Mihail, then Demon Slayer already has 100% knockback resistance right out the gate. Third skill on the list is Curse of Fury. You have a 1% chance to double your damage when you're attacking and it recovers 5 HP. It's not a very particularly practical skill just because of the fact that it has only a 1% chance to activate. In fact, I keep forgetting this skill even exists, but it's there. You also get all the other skills like Blessing of the Fairy, Empress's Blessing. You'll get things like Hero Echo and Soaring and other stuff by doing other quests. The passive skills that you get for the time being is just these three. Okay. First job, Demon Lash. So Demon Slayer is one of the few classes that have their auto attack replaced, similar to the likes of Aaron and I believe Jet even. By uh, just using your control key, Demon Lash initiates four different attacks with relatively strong range. The first one's just going to be kind of like an arc slash that hits right in front of you. Let's go ahead and hit something. There we go. So it just hits in front of you. The second attack is kind of like a side. I'm trying to like make the motion with my hand in real life, but I don't have a face cam. The second one is a second hit that just hits like, oh, I think it's like a liver punch or something like that. The third one is a flip. So you see the second anim or the third animation, it kind of like lashes around in an aerial format. That one has more vertical range. So I think I can hit this guy. No. Like that. So yeah, it has more vertical range than the third attack, and then the fourth attack is a finishing attack that just shoots out a giant, like, dragon head looking thing. And it has more range than the first and second hits. Also, Demon Lash is a passive evolving component, just like Jet and Aaron, which is why um, the color looks uh, significantly different. At the very beginning for first shop, your Demon Lash will look yellow. But then when you turn into second job, it turns orange, third one is red, and fourth one is purple, which is why mine is purple. First attack on the list is Grimsight. Now, Demon Slayers have a different resource other than mana. They use Demon Force, which is it has like pretty much the same principles as the likes of Kana's mana or Zero's Time Force. And uh, Grimsight is the first holding skill. So Demon Slayers have a lot of holding skills. They get one per job, I believe. And um, Grip Scythe, it's a pretty decent attack, and it attacks all enemies in front of you, and it creates kind of like a whirling wheel of death. I'll show you right now. It looks like this. You gotta hold down the skill, and then it just leaves this thing right in, out in front of you. I believe it lasts up to, like, four seconds. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so roughly about four. It has decent range, but honestly, it's a little bit weaker than Demon Lash in general, just because Demon Lash, like, you don't have to... Grim Scythe, you have to stand still. Demon Lash, you can move around while you attack. You can also do things like just doing that. So people don't really use this skill too much, even in first job, and they never will. Battle Pact Demon Slayers get their booster skill at first job, which is very convenient. So it looks like this. 
Shadow Swiftness gives you 25 movement speed and 20 jump, so that's really helpful for getting you to the max speed cap. And HP boost, 30% max HP. You see this on pretty much every warrior. Second job, Barb Lash gives you just more damage on your Demon Lash, your first one. So you get 30% on your first, second, and third and fourth attacks. Also, the animation turns orange, like I said before. Soul Eater is the next holding down skill, and it's a bit more effective than Grimslight because it has more range and it pulls all enemies towards you. Let's go ahead and show you again. Looks like that. If they, if I didn't one-shot them, they would be getting pulled towards me, kind of like a vacuum skill. Just a little bit, they get pulled a tiny bit. Dark Thrust is a rush type skill, which essentially pushes you forward and it leaves behind kind of like a trail of darkness that uh, grabs enemies and pushes them with you. So Demon Slayers have both a pulling skill and a rush skill, which is really helpful. I mostly just use Dark Thrust if I want to move very quickly. Once again, if I didn't one-shot these mobs, they would be pulled along and end up right around here. It's also really good. This is one of the few rush skills that have a delay into them, which means that it doesn't actually rush according to your character's hitbox, but rather a hitbox that just second follows you. Pretty good skill. It's good for repositioning very quickly because since Demon Slayers do not have like an effective flash jump or anything, Dark Thrust is good for just moving very quickly. So if you're, let's say, in Magnus and a Meteor is falling on your head, you can just Dark Thrust to push yourself forward quickly. Chaos Lock is an interesting skill. By pressing the skill, it automatically targets the closest mob or like any random mob on the screen. It's kind of like a blink skill, and it has a very weird targeting algorithm. I don't know how it works, but um, it does a decent amount of damage, and it's good if you want to just like quickly reposition yourself. It's also very helpful if you want to approach bosses that are very far away in like a big map. So for instance, like Hard Magnus or even Chaos Vel. I haven't done this in a while, so if the commentary is a little sparse, I, I apologize for that. Vengeance is a skill, and it looks like this. You kind of like just close your wings in a little bit. It grants you essentially a uh, thorns damage. So every time you take damage from something, they will take damage in return. So let's see if I can... Come on. Come on. There we go. Since I took damage there, it stuns the target, and then it also just deals a little bit of damage back to them. One of the weaker skills, I think, on Demon Slayer, because back then it actually used to be a decent amount when you took a lot of damage, but bosses cannot be stunned. It's just, yeah, it's not that significant, because you take like no damage, so the enemy takes no damage either. I guess it's okay to have. Weapon Mastery is the one-handed blunt and axe mastery, so Demon Slayer can use both maces and axes. They can use one-handed axes, or one-handed maces. Physical training increases strength and dex by 30, you've seen that before. Outrage gives you 50 attack and 20% critical hit rate, which is a very helpful skill. I should also mention, like every other class, you want to focus on putting just one point into your damaging skills and then focus on maxing all of your um, passive skills first. To figure out which skills are passive and which ones are active, the ones that have a darker background, like let's say physical training has kind of a gray background, that's a passive skill, and active skills have a white background, I'm trying to see if I can find an easier one like Battle Pact, which is a white background compared to HP boost is gray. One more thing that I do want to point out is that uh, each skill that actually consumes Demon Force has kind of like a little flag on the top left of their icon, so the color of it usually determines how much fury it takes without you having to actually look at it, but it does specify how much fury it costs. The higher you go, the more fury they're going to take up until it goes to things like, let's say, blue, and then finally black. Okay. Third job, Demon Lash Arc, which gives you another 70% in final damage to your Demon Lash on top of the 30% you got from Barb Lash, so Demon Lash will go up to 200%. Judgment is the next skill that you go ahead and pick up. It's just a really big nuke, so you jump into the air and smack into the ground, creating giant spikes that just attack a whole bunch of mobs. It's not bad. It has pretty good range too. A little slow though. Okay. Vortex of Doom is another pull and rush skill at the same time, so it creates sights that gra or chains that expand out in front of you and then it drags enemies in. Once again, if it didn't kill the mobs, it would pull them into the center, so what a lot of people like to do is they do things like, um, say, Vortex of Doom, and then they use Judgment to smack them all when they're together. Raven Storm is a very useful skill. It's a skill that unleashes ravens that attack in a drill in front of you, but it also recovers 50% of your max HP and you're invincible while you're casting. So Demon Slayers have very small amounts of iframes that you can use, and it's also good for giving you just a really quick boost in healing in case you're, let's say, in potion cooldown or you need it like right away. 
I would say it's about 33.33 seconds or a third of a second in terms of iframes, just from the way the skill comes out. It might be maybe half a second, but it's like a good amount of time to prevent you from getting hit by like at least one attack. Carry On Breath is the third job's holding skill, and it has a similar property to, I guess, Grim Scythe. However, it's all around you. So you summon this guy that just starts breathing in or breathing out like poison gas. It's an interesting skill, I guess. It also poisons monsters, but it's not that much damage. It says targets take continual damage over a short time and are unable to eat lunch for a week afterwards, so apparently he just burps all over everyone and kills them. So if you don't want to use things like, let's say, Judgment or Vortex of Doom and Judgment, you can use Vortex of Doom and Carry On's Breath instead to do this. Blackhearted Strength gives you 100% weapon defense or just defense in general, which doesn't really matter too much because every boss does percent max health damage, but you do also get abnormal status resist by 60 or plus 60, and element resist by 60%. I don't know how much the third one is valued for, but the abnormal status resist is okay, I guess. Insult to Injury does more damage if you're attacking a target that is debuffed, and uh, Demon Slayers have quite a few debuffs that you can go ahead and put in. So Incapacitation status, I believe, is the... I don't remember exactly what it is, but essentially you do more damage to targets that are affected by crowd control. Folk Fury gives you 25% final damage, the best combat stat in the game, and one stage of attack speed, which is very helpful. Possess Ages, when you're attacking, you have a 30% chance of guarding. When guarding is successful, you recover 3% of HP and 5 Fury recovered. Max Fury gives you more Fury recovery whenever you just deal damage with Demon Lash. It says Demon Slash, but it might just be a translation thing. You also regenerate 10 Fury every 4 seconds. You normally do not generate Fury on your own, but with this skill, now you do. Fourth job. Demon Thrash, which gives you another 120% 120% final damage for a total of 220%. So Demon Lash will then do 330 at the first and second hit, and third and fourth hit will do 320. Infernal Concussion will be your main mobbing skill for the rest of the game pretty much, and it has a similar property to Judgment, where it essentially it's a huge wide range nuke. The first attack will summon these like red bombs or whatever that will knock enemies up in the air if they don't die already, and then it'll explode, dealing damage to all targets that are in the area. And um, the second attack, or the second instance of attack, the explosion, has a 100% critical hit rate. Demon Impact is your main Boston skill, in terms of like not counting hyper skills, it's just a giant impaling attack in front of you, and that also has a 100% crit rate, and it also has a 30% ignore defense component. It slows for 3 seconds, so that will proc, um, I believe it procs insult injury, yes. So it has a slowing component to it for 3 seconds that does affect bosses, I believe. It also does 40% more damage to bosses. Demon Cry is a full map attack that uh, does a lot of damage, and it applies an enemy debuff and kind of like an experience buff for you as well. So enemies hit will lose 15% attack and defense and 20% accuracy, but I believe you also get a buff that gives you 20% more experience and item drop rate. I don't know if that applies only to the targets that are hit or if it's a buff. This skill used to be spammable back when Demon Slayers first came out, and then uh, it got nerfed, but now it's more of a supportive, uh, like a breaker type ability. Binding Darkness is another full map attack that uh, just explodes the entire map and any targets that are hit are binded for 10 seconds. And uh, it says that the damage increases based on how much damage is inflicted by Binding Darkness, but for bosses that includes dealing percent max HP damage. And 99.99% of the time, you will not do enough damage to increase the duration of the bind by more than like maybe half a second. It's really good, it also gives you 30% ignore enemy defense. Dark Metamorphosis is another buff that when cast, I'll show you how it looks like. Kind of sprout out your wings even further, and then you get this like weird dark purple aura. Dark Metamorphosis is a very powerful buff that gives you 35% damage, more HP, and it also creates a like a, an aura that kills enemies near you, so you can just go ahead and walk towards them and yeah. There's a special component with Dark Metamorphosis I want to talk about in a bit. Boundless Rage is another ability that costs 100 Fury, so it costs the most out of any ability in the game, but it gives you infinite Fury for a short period of time. Also, it gives you a lower cooldown on Demon Cry, which is 7 seconds, and I believe it also applies to one of your hyper skills, so I will not use it right now. Leech Aura, which apparently only maxes out at level 9, mostly just because Demon Thrash is only one level. It's a buff that uh, gives you 3% damage return to party members' as HP for 180 seconds. So all damage you deal will heal your party members just based on how much damage you do. There's a cap for how much it actually heals. It's a 5 per second cooldown every time. 
And I think every instance of the buff, you only heal 25% max HP. Pretty interesting animation, and uh, it has a lot of lifesteal to it. It's a really good useful lifesteal ability, but I don't know exactly if it means that every 5 seconds you can't heal more than 25%, or for the entire buff, you can't heal for more than 25%. I'm pretty sure when they say 5 second cooldown, they're referring to the fact that it's just every 5 seconds you cannot heal more than a quarter of your HP, because you can spam this ability as much as you want. Yeah. Kate Maple Warrior? Demon Slayers have a slightly different Maple Warrior. It's more of like a kind of like a dark, edgier version of the uh, regular Maple Goddess. But same principles. Barricade Mastery is your upgraded mastery form that every class has. In your case, you also get more attack power and crit damage. And of City's skin, you take 20% less total damage. Okay, we'll move on to Hyper Skills. There are the three components that you get for your passive skill boosts are Demon Lash, Dark Metamorphosis, and Demon Impact. Demon Lash Fury Absorption 50% is not necessary because you generate a lot of Fury anyway. Demon Lash Reinforce is very important because it's 150% more damage. Now you might be thinking, why would I use Demon Lash over, let's say, Demon Impact when Demon Impact does more damage? That's for another important reason I'll explain in just a bit. They also have a Demon Lash Reinforce Duration, which gives you a 4 second buff for 10% final damage. It does not actually register in here, it registers in your actual skills. So your skills do more damage while this buff is out. Simply put, every so often you want to go ahead and attack with Demon Lash before you go ahead and continue your regular skills. Dark Metamorphosis, I'll talk about the bottom two first. Uh, Fury Cost Reduction, do not need, it's a buff, it, you don't have to use it too often. Reinforce, 20% more damage on a buff that doesn't really give you too much utility in terms of DPS. However, the third skill, Dark Metamorphosis Enhance, gives you, I would say, Infiltrator for Pokemon, I don't know. Okay, so essentially the way it works is that for 20% of your initial casting duration, you will ignore things like Attack Ignore, Damage Reflect, and everything like that. So if you're up against a boss that has TR or anything of the sort, Dark Metamorphosis can actually be very helpful for you. Hardly any endgame bosses like Lotus, Damien, Lucid, Will, and Varus, Hilla, Dark, Nell, Gloom, they don't really have damage reflect, but bosses like, let's say, Empress or Chaos Horntail, they will. Um, I still take it, however, some people vouch for taking in Reduced Fury for Demon Impact, which we'll move on to right now. 20% more damage, one more extra attack in Demon Impact, and Reduced Fury. All three of these are great. I just take the Dark Metamorphosis Enhance because it just helps, like whenever I have to deal with a mob that has Weapon Cancel. Although you can take Reduced Fury, however, because um, especially after the indirect buff that we Demon Slayers got, Demon Impact doesn't really eat up too much Fury, so I don't worry about it too much. Their active skills, the first one is Blue Blood. Blue Blood is interesting. It's a very, very powerful hyper skill. It's a buff that increases your number of attacks hit by double the amount. So think of it as Shadow Partner, except you don't have to lose like 30% of your damage. However, in exchange, all of your attacks lose I think, hang on a minute. I believe the way it works is that it's essentially a shadow partner, but the second instances of the lines that you deal are only 90% of your power. So it's like a 10% damage drop. So it effectively doubles your DPS. Now, every time you generate 50 fury, it reduces the cooldown of the skill by two seconds. Oh no, I'm sorry. It reduces the cooldown of Blue Blood by 3 seconds, however, if you have Boundless Rage active, it also reduces it by 2 seconds every set interval. So, this buff is actually really, really useful. Now I'll show you what it actually does. It looks like that. And now all of my skills do not cost any Fury. Also, you can see over here, every time I generate Fury, Blue Blood will go down by cooldown. So let's go ahead and see if we can get more. There you go, so it skips cooldown even further. So in other words, if you have enough buff duration, and if you're constantly attacking the enemy over and over again, you can effectively have Blue Blood active forever. Which is, it's a little hard to do, because the cooldown is double the duration of the buff. But if you can get like 50% or even 75% buff duration on Demon Slayer, you can easily reset Blue Blood over and over and over again. Their attacking skill is Cerberus Chomp, which is a very big nuke with the hitbox that's roughly like this size. It's deceivingly large. Um, Cerberus Chomp is huge. It does a lot of damage, and it also does uh, bonus damage to bosses, and it also has an ignore monster defense rate, just like most of Demon Slayer's other skills like Demon Impact and the like. It also regenerates you 50 Fury just by hitting a mob. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use up all of my Fury if possible. What's a good way to do it? Let's do this. Or maybe this. Yeah, there we go. And then when you use Cerberus Chomp, it'll restore 50 Fury right away. There we go. You should use Cerberus Chomp during your regular DPS just to maintain your Fury, and Cerberus Chomp actually helps you refill your Blue Blood cooldown very quickly as well. 
Demonic Fortitude gives you just 10% more damage. It's the uh, Epic Adventure, the Resistance Link skill type thing, and it applies to demons, so Demon Slayer, Demon Adventure, your Zenon, and Resistance members. It looks like this. Just another classic buff that increases your damage. Alright, that's Hyper Skills, let's move on to Fit Shop Skills, and I'll try to make it as quick as possible. So, the skills that Demon Slayer has, I won't talk about Warrior Job ones, like let's say Impenetrable Skin or Weapon Aura, but I will talk about the Demon Slayer exclusive ones. First one that you get, Defender of the Demon, which I'll put over here, I guess. And it summons Mistema? Mistema? I think Mistema, or I think it's Mistema. She's kind of like your companion friend that's responsible for your job advancements. And uh, when you use her, it summons her, and uh, she follows you around and just starts attacking stuff. I don't know where she is. Oh, she's right here. Okay. And then she just randomly attacks enemies that are nearby. It's pretty decent for helping you clear out other mobs, but I don't really think it's as effective as the likes of the ones that Cygnus Knights get, because it operates kind of like a soul weapon. It's still very good. It's very powerful, don't get me wrong. I don't see many Demon Slayers using it too much. Oh, okay, it's on cooldown. Next skill that you get is Demon Awakening, one of, and I still preach this to be one of the most powerful fit job skills in the game. So remember when I said that you wanted to put in more points into, or you want to put a point into Demon Latch Reinforce, even though you're not going to be using it too frequently in its base form? Demon Awakening puts your Demon Lash on steroids. Not only does it give you 58% critical rate, I think at max level it's 65% uh, crit rate, it also gives you a really overpowered Demon Lash that has bonus boss damage of 50% and 50% ignore defense, and every hit critically strikes, I believe. And if not, the extra critical rate that you just get from Demon Awakening will bring you up to like 100% for the most part. This is what it looks like. Now remember the old Demon Lash, right? Now this is the new one. It's just a really gigantic enhancement of your current main attacking skill, and it does so much damage. Also. Demon Awakening will randomly proc, not randomly, it'll incrementally proc Cerberus Chomp every 8 seconds. So you can use regular Cerberus Chomp and the one that the passive one comes out of. It does a huge amount of damage. We're looking at 500 or like 600%, 700%, 800%. It's ridiculous. It's really powerful. The second skill is Spirit of Rage, or in other words, um, they kind of translated to make it a little bit easier, but this is actually based off of uh, Norse mythology. This is Jormungard. It's the Nordic Serpent. It's a giant summon. It's a really big one. So when you summon it, there he is, and he just starts dealing damage to all enemies near him. It's a ridiculous range, like the hitbox is way bigger than it looks, and then after a period of time, it just explodes. There you go, and does a huge amount of damage. So it's really good for clearing out spots, in, especially when you're training like a small map. So if you're thinking, let's say, Cavern Lower Path or Slurpy Forest Depths, Spirit of Rage literally attacks the entire map. So. This is like one of the best summon skills in the game. It only lasts a short period of time, but it's a decent enough time to like make a difference in your training speed. And then attack number three is Orthrus, which is another summon skill. Now I think Orthrus is more effective than Defender of the Demon just because it has more range and overall it's just like a much more, I guess, useful skill, which makes sense because it's an attacking fetch skill. When you summon Orthrus, you get Nemia, 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 I think it's Nemia, and Garion. And uh, they're just twins that follow you around, and uh, every time you deal damage to a target, they will just rain hot death on everyone nearby. So now see, this is a much more effective summon skill. So you can have these guys out, you can have your soul weapon out, and if you want to use Mistema, you can. But these guys are just so much more useful, and they get a lot more done. And they attack on their own accord. With one of them attacking faster, and we uh, faster but weaker, and the other attacking slower but stronger. I forget which one does more damage. But yeah, Orthrus is really good. Orthrus also receives 100% crit rate and 50% ignore enemy defense. So essentially all of Demon Slayer's attacks are really good against bosses and like big defensive targets. Okay, now let's talk about their brief boost notes. The ones that you want to go for in particular are going to be Demon Lush, Demon Impact, Cerberus Chomp, and then I believe you also want to go for Infernal Concussion for mobbing. For Demon Impact, you get one extra target hit and 20% enemy defense ignored. Demon Lush, same thing. And Cerberus Chomp, I believe, is the same thing. I'm pretty sure Infernal Concussion is also the same thing. Let me find it. Uh, tch -tch -tch. Let's go ahead and put this on C. Yeah, it's also, so everything has the same bonus. Some skills have different bonuses than others, which is why I wanted to check on them. And uh, your perfect trio, I guess, will be something like this. Like Cerberus Chomp, Demon Lash, and Demon Impact. You also do want to fit in a couple Infernal Concussion notes in there to max out your mobbing skill, which is this one. Infernal Concussion is nowhere near as good as when you have the likes of, let's say, Demon Awakening available, because Demon Awakening covers much more area, along with your other um, hit chop skills. But when they're off, then you want to go ahead and use Infernal Concussion. 
It's also really aesthetically pleasing. I like all of Demon Slayer's skills just because they look so freaking majestic. It's really cool. Alright, so we're above 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and end this quickly as possible. What else do I want to talk about? Oh yeah, so I want to talk about Link's skills really quickly. The ones that you want to go for are pretty much all the ones that, you know, you have available for you. The only things that I don't think you really need to worry about are things like Phantom Instinct because you get 100% crit rate on pretty much all of your attacks or your important ones, but I still keep it anyway just in case. You also don't really need things like, let's say, Night's Watch. You don't need that really too much. Everything else though, let's say, things like Tide of Battle, Judgment, Unfair Advantage, Terms and Conditions, Focus Spirit, Wild Rage, Hybrid Logic, all of these are useful. I just have most of them on my Dual Blade right now. Alright, finally, Inner Ability. So, for Inner Ability, to my knowledge, Demon Slayers already reached the zero attack speed cap by themselves. All you need is like Monster Park Green Potion and Speed Infusion, which you get from your V Matrix. So you do not need attack speed plus one on your inner ability. Instead, most Demon Slayers opt for buff duration, boss damage, and attack. That's what you want to go for. I still have to go ahead and get mine, but for the most part, I think this is okay for now. What else? I think that's about it. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section below, but I think that wraps it up for Demon Slayers. In terms of how you want to gear him up, because Demon Slayers get a lot of crit rate and ignore defense, you want to prioritize most of your stats on going for boss damage and percent attack. And I think Demon Slayers actually get more out of being attack based than strength based, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a super endgame Demon Slayer. I think that's gonna be it. So if you guys enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Alternatively, if I made a mistake or if there's something you want to correct me on, feel free. Other than that, I think we're pretty much done, so I'll let you continue on with the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next video. Take care.